I want to thank all of you for coming. We are, of course, gathered for the purpose of celebrating Sue's life. We lost her on May 7th. A little too late in getting to this point, but better late than never, and a lot to celebrate in, in, in this lady's life. We have a common bond, I think, that unites us. Uh, our friendship with Sue, uh, our appreciation of her warmth and graciousness, and and a special appreciation for her dedicated dedication to the community. And uh, appropriate that we celebrate her life by focusing on her community service. Most of you here uh, share in Sue's interests in the arts and the development of our community. Many of you here are neighbors and former neighbors. We lived in Kings Point for 35 years and in the coast at 15. Good to see so many of you here. Others of you um, shared Sue's varied interest, which ranged from <laughs> Ladies Week on the Outer Banks to work with the League of Women Voters, bowling, tennis, sailing on the Mob Jack Bay, bridge and book clubs, watercolor students under Jan Ledbetter, Garden Week, William and Murray alumni activities, performances by musical groups such as the Symphonia, and importantly for many of us, uh, enjoying each other's companionship over good food in your homes and in ours. Since losing Sue, I and my family have been consoled by many of you, and we are especially appreciative of the outreach you've made and the tribute you have paid to Sue and your contributions to the various organizations that she supported. Uh, I've had letters of uh, gratitude from many of these organizations and your generosity has been most appreciated. I'm grateful for having an extended family, many of whom are present, some of whom cannot be present. Uh, those who cannot be present today include my youngest daughter, Jennifer, uh, my seven grandchildren who are spread over four states, my brother in Atlanta and his family. But we do have a number of people present who I can claim as relatives, very close and uh, closer in some respects than you might imagine. Uh, my marriage was blessed with three children who had been previously married. She brought to our marriage two children, and they're here, and uh, I will get to that momentarily. She lost her first husband uh, as a casualty in the Vietnam War, and uh, I'm gonna ask as I introduce people to wave their hands so you'll see who they are. And I'll begin with my oldest, Ken Sheldon, and his wife, Millie. There he is. <laughs> Our oldest daughter, Kiki Sheldon, and her husband, Kevin, back in the corner over there. Um, Sue's naval family, represented by the uh, son of her deceased sister, nephew Keith Webb, and his wife, Wendy, in the back corner there. Uh, my naval family, who are children of my deceased sister, Penny. They're represented throughout the room by Lori Dickens Stroud and her husband, Danny, from Fort Royal, South Carolina. And the rest of the Dickens clan is from the Richmond area. Spencer Dickens and wife, Pam. David Dickens. And Lisa Dickens Penny, also in the back of the room. My extended family also includes Sue's in-laws by her first marriage. <laughs> Very close extended family. Uh, Sue's sister-in-law, uh, Anne Moncrief, uh, Anne at the time Sheldon, now Anne Moncrief, married to Bert Moncrief over there. 
are here with their two children and spouses, Matthew Moncrief and wife Elizabeth, there, and um, Matt Moncrief, Irvin, and wife, a uh, husband, John Irvin, <laughs> that corner over there, and Annie and Bert's four grandchildren, uh, Charlie Moncrief, right there, <laughs> Graham Moncrief, right next to Charlie, <laughs> Uh, Grace Irvin, where's Grace? Right here, okay. And Jack Irvin. I was welcomed into the Sheldon family and treated as an in-law one step removed. <laughs> Her mother and father-in-law, uh, Jean and Eugene Sheldon, uh, sponsored the wedding reception. <laughs> and, uh, we dined with them frequently, even vacationed and spent holidays with them. And uh, been treated as part of the extended Sheldon family for more than five decades. I am especially grateful for Ken and Kiki, who persuaded Sue that I could be an acceptable husband. <laughs> <laughs> and she took some persuasion. <laughs> Let me thank you again for being here. And it's just the most appropriate, as I said earlier, that we celebrate Sue's life by noting her involvement in the community. Uh, to a lesser extent, she was involved in such organizations as uh, and activities engaging in fundraising for uh, various organizations, renting a house as a venue for uh, various fundraising events by the Symphonia, uh, the law school, and other organizations. Uh, she served on the board of Avalon uh, and for this mission of trying to assist women who were uh, the subject of uh, unsuccessful marriage. They called it battered women, and I think that's the way of describing it. She enjoyed those roles, but she particularly enjoyed uh, several organizations that consumed most of her time and almost a full devotion. Uh, those organizations were, of course, CDR, the Occasion for the Arts, and uh, Williamsburg Contemporary Arts Center under its various former names and its, its continuing <laughs> mission. Uh, we're fortunate to have four people here today who are willing to speak to that service. And I'm going to ask Kathy Allport to come forward and tell us about Sue's role with CDR. For John and his wonderful extended family. Kareen Garland, our retired Director of Child Development Resources, cannot be here today. In her stead, I feel privileged to share with you Kareen's thoughts regarding Sue's service in a C as a CDR board member from 1995 to 2007. The appreciation of Sue is shared by our staff, our families, and our board members. A nonprofit board provides effective administration and guarantees the resources needed for an agency to fulfill its mission. Some board members define their service by using a specific skill set law, finance, marketing. For her board service, Sue brought her passion for CDR's mission, ensuring that families have the services and supports they need so that children in our community are able to reach their full potential. An auction volunteer for years and as auction gifts chair, Sue was the five-star general who inspired <laughs> others to enlist and to support with their time, their treasure, and their talent the mission to which she was committed. Or she might well be described as a drill sergeant, making sure that everyone worked together with precision, filling out every form on time, dotting every I, bringing in beach house weeks for the auction, ties from Rusty, trellis dinners, concert tickets, gallery memberships, and winter brunch for 20 with John's Bloody Marys, Sue's own baked eggs, John Milliman's sticky buns, and Anne's Grolotz. Sue's energy and organizational skills laid the groundwork for those who followed her so they too could turn chaos 
into amazing organization. Long after retiring from her board and auction positions, Sue and John continued to contribute to the auction, including the party pantry. We had to eventually discontinue party pantry, which had been very popular, um, due to a lack of younger cooks in the next generation. <laughs> Sue and John hold the record for the longest continuous contributors to party pantry. Their gourmet donations were always the first to sell. Sue's work brought together her commitment to CDR's mission and community support for its ability to fulfill that mission. Exceptional service by one whom we all know to have been an exceptional person. We at CDR found great pleasure in working with Sue. The agency gained enormous rewards from her work, and now we are deeply grateful to her family for choosing memorials directed to CDR as well as others. Hundreds, if not thousands of people have volunteered for CDR since its founding. Few have left such a great impact as Sue. We extend our sympathy and gratitude to her family. Thank you very much. <coughs> Sue is also deeply committed to the occasion for the arts. And I'm going to ask Stuart Hornberger, immediate past president of the occasion, to come forward. And he'll be followed by Nancy Wigley, who is the current president. When I reflected uh, on Sue's service to an occasion for the arts, and I must admit, uh, while I deepened my relationship with Sue through my time as the president of occasion for the arts, uh, that was not my first introduction to her. I'm fortunate to say she has been a family friend to my parents, uh, who were both uh, students of uh, John at the law school. But I came to know her uh, on occasion for the arts as a beneficial so, uh, force, a beneficial force, and I hope that's something that we can all reflect on as we leave today. We'll start with the force. Uh, <laughs> Sue recruited me, uh, and I heard Drill Sergeant uh, in the prior uh, comments, uh, to an occasion for the arts, which meant me reporting for duty at around 5.30 a.m. on the first Saturday of October, uh, which I still sort of instinctively just arrive there uh, the first weekend of October every year uh, to help with setup and moving chairs and setting up tables and hanging banners and whatever else was needed uh, prior to then serving in the headquarters tent, uh, directing volunteers, answering questions, um, all with her consistent encouragement and guidance, um, which was welcome uh, and needed. Uh, I later joined the board uh, and ultimately did serve, as John mentioned, as president for several years, uh, which was a great honor. And one of the most enjoyable things being getting to serve with Sue. Uh, Sue knew uh, what she wanted uh, to communicate and communicated it clearly. Uh, you always knew uh, where S Sue stood on any particular issue for the board, uh, and I mean that in, in the most helpful ways. Uh, if any of you have served on boards, which I know many of you have, it can sometimes be like pulling teeth to get participation and engagement and, uh, and interest, and, and Sue didn't lack any of those things and uh, was, was such a life force for that reason. Uh, Sue was thoughtful, caring, committed, generous, and passionate as a board member. And, it was a force that I was pleased uh, to know and still feel today. Now the benefit. Um, everything Sue touched, from my perspective, benefited. Uh, this seemed to be her clear intention when she chose to pick up a task for uh, a purpose, which I think she, again, did with great intentionality. Uh, she wanted the best for the people and the organizations that were in her life, again, many of us fortunate enough to count ourselves in that group, all. Uh, first, I saw that impact on her family, uh, the intentionality with which she uh, created family trips, uh, stayed in constant communication, um, and truly wanted her life uh, and 
her and John's life together to benefit her family. Uh, specifically in her partnership with John, in their volunteer work, in his professional work, uh, in all that they did in the community. Uh, she was constantly thinking of how she could benefit him and they could benefit the community together. And finally, that brings me to the community. And, uh, others are going to speak to it, obviously have with CDR and the Waysburg Temporary Arts Center, but for an occasion for the arts, um, there, there was no more dedicated uh, person to the mission that has led us for 54 years to promoting the arts in Williamsburg and enjoying what we affectionately call our favorite weekend. Uh, so I can easily say that Sue was my favorite part of our favorite weekend. Um, in closing, Sue Donaldson inspired me uh, to live in a way that benefits my family and my community. Uh, I'm grateful to God and to her and to her family and John uh, for that impact and I pray that all of us will carry forward that same mission of benefiting those in our lives and in our community that need it. Uh, let us all be the beneficial sort of force that Sue Donaldson was. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Sue. And Nancy Wigley, all of I am so fortunate to know Sue um, on, on two different levels because I'm not only the current uh, president of an occasion for the arts, but I work for CDR <laughs> as the special event coordinator. I now run the auction <laughs> that Sue was uh, such a huge part of. So um, I, 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 get to, I got to experience her on, on both sides. I'm here representing an occasion for the arts today, but I, I always represent CDR. Um, those two things are, are integral in my life. Um, I don't have any prepared words. Um, that's how uh, people know me, though I just keep doing it. <laughs> um, but I joined the board uh, of an occasion for the arts. I also was recruited um, by Richard Stratton, if anybody here will remember him. Um, I volunteered one time, and he said, and now you're on the board, and he handed me a polo shirt. <laughs> um, and that was in 2010. And, uh, and so I, I started on the board. And uh, of course, Sue by that time was already an institution um, with an occasion for the arts. Um, I also have a, a, just a little interesting background. My mother was the producer of an occasion for the arts back in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, so this is a role that I come by very naturally. <laughs> I, I basically inherited it. Um, so and Sue worked with my mother, of course, when she was uh, uh, heading up the show. Um, so she had been around. She was a, an amazing historian to have. Um, board members, as we all know, come and go, except for apparently me and Stuart. Um, <laughs> and, and, but Sue was just a constant. Um, and there wasn't anything she didn't remember um, about shows. Well, I remember back in 1972 um, when we did this and, you know, and what worked and what didn't work. Um, and um, just was, it was such, it was so nice to have that constant presence um, each year knowing that Sue was going to be Sue was going to be there she was just going to be there um, in that and we did our 50th anniversary in 2018 the occasion's 50th anniversary and her and my mother sat down and tried to create a, um, a list of names of who to invite and Sue had every program going back to 1917 <laughs> that had all the listing of all the donors um, and from those programs from 1970 and on, um, they created a nice mailing list, and I hope most of you were at least on that list. Um, and uh, if, if we missed you, I'm terribly sorry. Um, but that was Sue, she had everything. And then I actually also got to collect all of the CDR auction brochures <laughs> for the last 40 years as well, <laughs> because Sue had all those too. Uh, um, I was, I was, very honored to be able to um, to go to their home um, several times while she was donating, as you all downsized, and she donated some wonderful, wonderful pieces of art um, to the to the to the CDR auction. And um, her home was like it was a gallery. It was an incredibly beautiful curated gallery, and it was so clear where her passion was and where and where her aesthetic was with art. 
Um, and I just, I, I, I felt like, I just felt so honored um, that she invited CDR to be a part uh, of that. Um, and I now have the leather rooster. <laughs> I made sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, you know, Sue was a member of the board. She, she finally stepped down um, after our virtual show in 2020 um, because she just felt like she, she couldn't get the coffee and the donuts anymore for the information booth. <laughs> and if she couldn't bring the coffee and the donuts, then what was her purpose? <laughs> so um, it, was, it was wonderful to have her. Um, my husband and I, we plan on being at some point the Sue and John Donaldson of the information booth. Um, and we did, um, at, at Occasion for the Arts, wanted to do something a little more um, permanent, I guess. So we have renamed, and if you were, any of you were at the Occasion for the Arts and came by the headquarters tent, there is a banner up now that says that that is officially the Sue Donaldson information booth at an Occasion for the Arts. <laughs> um, and uh, we're all just so grateful for what she did and she served, how she served all of us. So. Thank you very much, Thank Nancy. You. Our last formal presentation, and we'll have a couple of informal events, is the marks that will be delivered by Janice Wood on behalf of the Williamsburg Contemporary Arts Center. Thank you, John. I'll, uh, I can do that. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. We really appreciate John holding this event here uh, where Sue has spent so much time and so much of her life with this organization. Uh, I hope you all enjoy the gallery. If you can see it, there's an awful lot of people here, but take your time after this and spend some time and take a look. We don't have to leave here at any particular time, so enjoy yourselves. But uh, I will tell you, it's hard to explain hard to explain how we're going to miss Sue. It's just everyday reminder uh, when, when we're here and we go back. Uh, Nancy was talking about the archives that Sue kept on every organization. She kept them on ours too and I got all of those myself when she was downsizing. So uh, Sue was amazing. I don't know how she did it. Um, she, over the decades, she was a tireless leader, advocate, and supporter of what was then this Century Art Gallery and is now Williamsburg Contemporary Art Center. Um, she's a legend, really. Um, she seldom said no to anything we ask her to do or to help with. And uh, John also, we want to thank him for all his years of service, usually side by side or at the request of Sue. Um, if we couldn't, if we weren't brave enough to ask John to do it, we'd just have Sue ask John to do it. <laughs> Pretty much a snap. <laughs> um, John and his very distinguished crew have been our bartenders at all of our events and openings for, I don't even know how many years, but it's, I don't know, our parties are the best because of that team. And uh, some of them are pretty distinguished characters, like lawyers and whatever, like John. Yeah, but you know, you'd never know it. They're just friendly, nice, sweet, and we love them. We love them. <laughs> I've, uh, I've known Sue since 2012. Uh, my husband and I had uh, finally settled in Williamsburg full time. We were both retired from long careers with the Federal Service in Washington, D.C. And then after we retired from that, we started a consulting business and, and were traveling all the time. But in 2012, we closed the business down. And all the while, I've been an artist for since my 30s. And uh, I won't tell you how long, how many years, but <laughs> since my 30s. and. Um, so even though I was working full time, I always painted. I always, my office in Washington, my paintings were in my office and I sold some paintings from my office. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> but um, when we retired for good, I told Doug, my husband, that I really needed to get back to some serious art, uh, you know, uh, 
practices and meet some other artists and start really taking more time for that. Uh, my husband's a lawyer. He was actually at the law school when uh, John was there. And um, we attended a, an alumni uh, law school event. And um, by happenstance, I happened to start talking with Sue. And uh, you know how you do, you exchange little stories. And when I told her I was an artist and I was ready to really do something, she said, oh, <laughs> you need to come and get involved with this century art gallery. So I said, wow, okay. <laughs> so shortly thereafter, I did join. And in 2013, I joined the board as well. And during my first year as a board member, uh, I was put in charge of holding a big annual event for the uh, organization. And Sue, of course, had been involved in all of the annual events from I don't even know how long because I'm fairly new. And uh, of course she was on our committee and of course she went to all of the her favorite places and got us uh, prizes for our auctions. And uh, she was amazing, but when I first got a feel for how Sue was and her her history. I went home to my husband. I said, Doug, remember John's wife that I met at that event for the law school? I said, she's a rock star. <laughs> and she is like amazing. So I was pretty impressed and I have not quit being impressed since. Uh, she, um, she was, um, I have, over the years benefited very much from her wisdom, advice, experience, her good-natured cajoling. Uh, whatever it took to get the job done, Sue was on it. <clears throat> she continued to encourage me and others while helping us be stronger and smarter, and we are a better organization today because of Sue. In closing, I told Sue that if it hadn't been for her, I might not have found this wonderful organization. <coughs> and gained so many good friends, sorry. Uh, she was always by our side and enormous help to me and the board. I wouldn't be president today if it weren't for Sue. Now, that can be either a blessing or a curse, <laughs> as many of you know, <laughs> but it has been some of the best years of my life, and I thank her for that. Thank you. Uh, John, we would like to present you with something. Right. Did you say something else? <laughs> well, uh, I'm happy to be <laughs> I was aware that the uh, art center was going to recognize Sue in some way. Yeah. And so here it is. <laughs> would you read it? I will. So this is going to hang on our wall in our fireside gallery. It's a plaque recognizing Sue's uh, whole 25 years of experience in the community. It says, recognizing and honoring with affection and gratitude the life and memory of Sue S. Donaldson, 1937 to 2021. Promoting the arts and well-being of the greater Williamsburg community in more than five decades of service to WCAC in various roles as a member, director, president, exhibitions committee, man, artist, hospitality coordinator, and general volunteer. Five decades of service to an occasion for the arts annual October festival as volunteer director, volunteer director, producer, president, secretary, and headquarters coordinator. Ongoing support to local organizations assisting abused women, families with disabled or developmentally challenged children, and meeting other community needs. Encouraging public support for the arts through service on the Williamsburg Area Arts Commission. We miss Sue's grace, warmth, and radiant smile. Honoring her memory, October the 10th, 2021. Bravo. My family would be very proud to know that this is on the wall as a continuing memento to uh, her service and a perpetuation of her memory. Thank you very much, Alice. Uh, before we adjourn, I would like for us to
supposed to sue, but uh, if you don't have a beverage, you can reach for one conveniently. I would encourage it. But if you'd like to do a symbolic raising of glasses, <laughs> uh, you can fill the glass shortly. <laughs> But before doing the toast, I think I'd like to, first of all, recognize some people who've made this event possible and even more enjoyable. Uh, Ann Milliman, Linda Berryman, have coordinated the food, and I hope they're here. And we have Bart Thunders and Stuart Ornberger and his associate. <laughs> They're here, and we are particularly indebted to the board of directors of the Art Center and to Janice for making this venue available for us and for coordinating invitations and helping things run smoothly. So thank you very much. And now if you will join me in a toast. I didn't want to mistake this, so I wrote it down. <laughs> but it's easy. Let's drink to Sue and her lifetime of service to the greater Williamsburg community, to a life well lived, and to her continuing presence in our memories. To <laughs> Sue. And thank all of you for coming. The event is not over. It continues on the back video. And hopefully, uh, those of you who are friends will continue to cultivate that friendship. And who have not yet become friends will hang around and make some. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. And thank you for this wonderful occasion for us and our families. And friends. Thank you.